Shoot, shoot. Go on, all of you. Ah, oh, it isn't one thing, it's everything. Daisy Bumstead, don't you ever have those people in this house again. You needn't go up there looking for sympathy. Good morning, Miss Bumstead. Alvin, what are you doing sticking your head through there? I thought you were another dog. I just wanted to show Baby Dumpling my firecracker. Indeed. Well, Baby Dumplin isn't allowed to have any firecrackers. So you just get your head out of that crack and take your firecracker home and crack it there. Besides, the 4th of July isn't until tomorrow. It's a Roman candle. R remember last year? It uh, makes pretty lights. <laughs> pretty light. Huh? We want noise, Daddy. We'd better put them all back. We might get caught. Can I keep just this one? You promise not to shoot it? Boy, I'm as hungry as a horse.
Certainly is good coffee. I married a good cook. I don't mean just a good cook, though. A good mother, a good wife. I guess sometimes we forget how lucky we are, baby dumpling. Oh, lucky. How'd you like to eat out tomorrow night, Blondie, huh? You know, uh, have a nice, quiet dinner somewhere, and, and then we could... Nice, quiet? Where? When this whole town will just be popping and fizzling. Aunt Hannah's. Aunt Hannah's? Mother's sister. She lives about ten miles past Crosley. You remember her, Dagwood. I'll never forget her. I, I mean, I remember her. It's always calm and quiet out there. We'll go. Oh. Is he still there? He's still eating breakfast. It doesn't mean a thing. He got egg all over my uniform last time. This is one time that he's not going to run into me. Aren't you afraid you'll be fired for holding up the mail? Better to be held up and picked up. I can show you how to deliver it, and he'll never even see you. How? Is it worth a quarter to you? Open the dining room window and drop the mail in there. You're a very bright young man. Fourth of July in the country. No noise, no explosions, and no danger. Just peace and quiet. Baby Dumpling, why are you making such a face? <gasps> Dad would look! <laughs> Oh, 
about that? What do you take for that? Two bits. It's a deal. I never was so frightened in all my life. <sighs> I'm all out of breath. Are you tired too, Daisy? <coughs> I'm completely exhausted. Mommy, Daddy. Let's don't talk for a while, baby. Let's just sit here and collect ourselves. Yeah. But, Mommy, I... Now, baby, don't bring do as your mommy says. How does it work, Ollie? Everybody pulls a slip of paper out of a hat. The one that pulls a slip marked, you're it, is it. But you're writing your it on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Mary. But everybody will say they got a blank, and then Dagwood will think that he's it. Oh, but that's awfully unfair, Ollie. <laughs> yeah, but awfully smart. Right, fellows? Right. <laughs> Here he comes. Get ready. Hello, Dagwood. Hiya, oh, Dagwood. Dag. Well, Dagwood, we're just in time. In time for what? Well, you see, we were talking it over, and we decided that we ought to have the whole weekend instead of just tomorrow. But tomorrow's only Thursday. Sure. So we want Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, too. Well, I don't think Mr. Divid... Wouldn't hurt to ask him. No, I guess not. Well, I'll see you later. Hey, 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 wait a minute. We're just going to draw a lot to see who does it. No, no. Every time I play that silly game, I lose. Well, huh? in that case, we'll give you first chance. Here, give me your hand. Now reach in and pull out a slip. The unlucky guy gets the slip marked, you're it. Yeah, now let me hold the hat. I think that must have something to do with it. No, I'll hold oh, it. Oh, go ahead, Ollie. Let him hold it. Hold it up high, Dagwood. Yeah. Now remember, just one piece of paper. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Put the hat down. What's the use? He's already seen it. Well, why don't you speak up? Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Good morning Mr. Dennis. That's not what's on your minds. You're all thinking you've been working hard the last month and you're entitled to the entire weekend instead of just the fourth. Isn't that so? Oh, oh, no, sir. Sir. oh sir. Well, you're right. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Dithers. Oh, that's great, boss. Oh, <laughs> gee whiz, the whole weekend. <laughs> uh, but one of you must stay here to take care of any emergency that might arise. Oh, that's all right. Mr. Dithers, we'll draw lots for it. You see, we were just going to draw lots to see who would have to ask you for the weekend, though. Oh, I see. Uh, so we'll just go ahead now, and whoever's the unlucky well, guy... I right? think I understand, but huh? uh, let me hold the hand. Oh, oh don't, don't, don't let any of the boys see in it, Mr. Dithers. You see, one of the slips has your it written on it. 
Yes, uh, so it has. One of the slips has your writ written on it, all right. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Lewis, it was just a gag. On the contrary, I think it's a splendid idea. Why, I used to play this game when I was in college. Yes. <laughs> I must have lost on it half a dozen times before I... <laughs> yes, it's the same old game. It hasn't changed a bit. Now, uh, who thought of it? Oh, Ollie. <laughs> well, Ollie, you thought of it, so you shall have the first chance. All right, I'll stay. <laughs> I, I don't get the joke. Yeah, well, it's in your hat. <laughs> That's all right, Mrs. Woodley. You go ahead, and I'll wait right here till you call me back. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Woodley. No, it's me, Blondie, Dagwood. Uh, but it isn't Miss Woodley, it's me. Of course I can prove it. Uh, Mr. Dithers just gave us a holiday till Monday morning. Monday morning? Oh, that's fine. Then you're off already. Well, I'll wire Aunt Hannah that we're leaving this afternoon, and I'll have us all packed by the time you get here. Packed? Okay. Uh, oh, Blondie, uh, don't pack that bag in the closet. I, I want to do it myself. All right, dear. But please get off the phone so I can wire Aunt Hannah. Goodbye. Hello, Western Union. Take this message. Who? Mrs. Woodley? Well, for goodness sakes, when did you go to work for the Western Union? She wouldn't have Thanksgiving without a turkey. She wouldn't have Easter without a new hat. And she wouldn't have Christmas without a tree. But Fourth of July, no. No firecrackers. Got to get him out of here somehow. Daddy and I will both catch up. Excuse me, Mrs. Woodley, something's happened. I just got down the suitcase. Watch Daisy, Mommy. Jump, Daisy. Jump again. Jump, Daisy. Jump, Daisy. Back again. Daisy. I guess she's kind of tired. Guess we better get this thing out of the way. Just a minute, young man. I'll be right back. Where are you going with that suitcase? We've got to pack, haven't we? You pack your own suitcase. This is Daddy's. Daddy will be home in a minute, and I want to have everything. What was in that suitcase? So that's why your daddy didn't want me to pack his suitcase. Shame. Shame. They couldn't be from last 4th of July, could they? I'll put an end to this once and for all.
She drowned them. Plenty of time? Uh-uh, you're too late. Uh, we're all packed here, except your things. Oh, then I'll get right to it. Uh, is there something I can do for you, dear? Huh? No, I'm finished. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you really think this trip is a good idea, Bondi? Huh? You'd better get packed or we'll miss the train. Yeah, sure. Aren't you getting things awfully must that way? No, I always pack like this. Huh? Now it'll be easier. have to stand for this. We'll tell her. You tell her. Huh? All right. Hey, aren't you coming? My own flesh and blood, a coward. I'm not a coward. I'm just afraid. <laughs> now, oh, now, now, see here, Bonnie. You can't do this to us. I spent money for those firecrackers. You can't do it. That's all. Dagwood, listen to me. Dear, I realize how much the 4th of July means to you, because I know how much it means to baby. And you're nothing but a big kid yourself. But just this once, I wish both of you would look at it from my side. If anything would happen to you or to baby Dumplin', I... I just wouldn't want to live. If I were to ask either one of you to, to do something for me that, that was hard to do, you, you'd jump at the chance to do it, wouldn't you? But I'm asking something that's easy. And I'm asking it just for you, not for me. Please, Dagwood. Please, baby Dumplin'. Won't you give up this idea of fireworks? Thank you. Now, don't do it grudgingly. Let's all go out to Aunt Hannah's and have a quiet, peaceful holiday. We can get plenty of sunshine and fresh air and rest. And we'll come back with a whole new outlook on life. What do you say? Okay. Baby Dumpson? Okay, Mommy. Well, now that's better. Has anybody anything on his mind? I haven't anything on my mind, but I've got something in my pocket. Here, Mommy. As long as we're all together like this, nothing can happen to us. Oh, dear, we had to leave in such a hurry, but I guess we have everything. Certainly we have everything. Oh. There. Come on. Now remember, Baby Dumplin', don't say anything about D A I S Y. Okay, Mommy. Can I say anything about T I C K E T S? The tickets. Oh, I'll go get them. You get on the train, Bond. Oh, oh, the, the money. Baby Dumplin' and I certainly will be glad when we get started. We did. We did what? 
We did start it. Oh, oh, the train, it's moving. Conductor, conductor, come on, baby Dumplin'. What is it, madam? I'm leaving my husband and it isn't time yet. Uh, what? I mean, my husband went to get our tickets and we're leaving him. Don't get excited, madam, we're not leaving yet. Uh, I will too get excited. Look, the train's moving. That's a train backing in on the other track. But, huh? Oh. Uh, thank you. Baby Dumplin', what do you mean by telling Mommy the train is moving? I told them not to deliver any milk, and I canceled my appointment with the hairdresser. I sent the telegram. Oh, oh, I guess everything's all right. Who are you waving at, baby dumpling? Daddy. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Where is he? Over there. early. He has my pocketbook, too. I haven't any money to pay our fares. This is embarrassing, isn't it, Mommy? It's terrible. Now, how on earth am I going to... Oh, Dagwood, you made it. Great. Oh. Great. Did you get the tickets? Yeah. Oh. Tickets, please. Uh, oh. oh, they're in your purse. Look, I can't hold any more of these. Oh, I'm sorry. gave you the mail three weeks ago. Oh. What's the matter? What's Tickets, please. Oh, yeah. Oh. Here. These tickets are for Crosley. Uh, that's where we're going to, Crosley. Yeah. You're on the wrong train. Wrong, wrong train. train? This is an express. We don't stop at Crosley. But you do go through Crosley, don't you? Yes, madam, at about 60 miles an hour. Oh, can't you stop there just this once? Sorry. Where's your first stop? Kingsley. But that's 70 miles past Crosley. 72. Dagwood, don't argue with the man. We planned on reaching there tonight. You're lucky if you get there tomorrow. But what about the baby? 
baby. Huh? Oh, there's the baby. He's not very healthy. That's why we're taking him to the country. And if he has to spend the night in some strange hotel without the proper milk and everything, why, I just don't know what'll happen. Kingsley's a pretty big town, madam. I don't think you'll have any trouble. He has to have special food. He's different than any baby you ever heard of. And he's teething. Yes. Well, I just don't know what we'll do. I just don't know what we'll do. Well, it's against all the regulations, but I suppose in an emergency like this. Oh, thank you. Poor little fellow, we don't want to be responsible if anything happened to him. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Conductor, but we have people waiting to meet us in Crosley. But you and your teething baby can wave to him as you pass through from the baggage car. Now. We'll never get to Aunt Hannah sitting down. We'll never get to Aunt Hannah standing up. We'll never get to Aunt Hannah's. Uh -huh. I'm tired. I didn't rest well last night. Dagwood, how can you say that? You slept like a log. I know, but I dreamed I was awake. You ought to be ashamed. If you hadn't overslept, we wouldn't have missed the bus. Just look at Baby, and he hasn't even had his nap. I'll take it tonight when I go to bed anyway. <laughs> That's Mommy's good boy. When we get to Aunt Hannah's, you can have a nice, big, cold glass of buttermilk. Buttermilk on the 4th of July. Oh, God. Would give hmm? baby his hat. Hat? Oh, here. Oh, oh Daisy. Huh? Well, here comes another one. Oh. Would you like a ride? Oh, we'd love one. Where are you going? To Crosley. We're visiting my aunt. Oh, we'll take you there. That is, if you don't mind stopping her for a few minutes at Weehawk. We've got a little business to attend to there. Uh, oh, we don't mind. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Get right in there. It's awfully nice of you. Uh-huh. Sure. Dagwood, huh? you're not at home. Oh. <laughs> Lovely day. Yes, it's a very nice day. You don't know. What is it? I'll give you a hint. What do you think of when I say old shoes and rice? Chop suey. Uh, no, dear. A wedding. I told you they were in love. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dagwood, isn't it beautiful? I don't see anything. Oh, no, baby. I don't mean anything you can see. Remember when we were married? Of course I do. I can still see you. You were all in white. And your mother, you look like an angel. And you were so handsome. What's the matter, Mommy? Oh, I don't know, dear. Just makes me think that someday you'll meet a pretty girl and do the same thing. Not on 4th of July. Oh, 
Is the wedding over? Oh, no. It, we need another witness, and Millie thought maybe if you wouldn't... Oh, I'd be delighted. Oh, that's swell. That's swell. I... Oh, I hope you don't mind. It'll all be over in a minute. That's what the dentist said when he pulled my tooth. Well, I guess your mommy's happy she finally got in on the wedding. <laughs> what do people do at a wedding, Daddy? Oh, I don't know. When your mommy and Daddy got married, we had a big wedding cake. I remember that. Your <laughs> grandma and Aunt Dot were there. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, that must have been at the, uh, that must have been an anniversary cake. <laughs> What's an anniversary cake, Daddy? Well, you see, a wedding cake. Uh, well, you can't have a wedding cake at an anniversary because you're already married. And an anniversary cake is, well, uh, everybody eats up the wedding cake, but nobody eats the anniversary cake. Uh, I mean that there's nobody at the anniversary. What I'm trying to say is that the wedding cake is the only cake that the husband doesn't have to pay for, and that's an anniversary cake. I don't get it. Okay, Zeke. Is he going to the wedding, Daddy? Certainly not. No one goes to a wedding with a shotgun. Father, please, please. I'm surprised you take part in this thing, Newt. Hey? Now I listen, say I'm you surprised are... you take hey. part in... Huh? Oh, never mind. Come on, Millie. No, Father, I won't go. Take your hands off her. Go ahead with the ceremony. Charlie, do you take Millie for your wife? You must think I'm a fool. I do. Come on, Millie. Now, wait a minute now, Mr. Tucker. I've had just about enough. you got to listen to reason. Millie, do you take Charlie for your husband? You must think I'm crazy. I do. Now, look, you Stand I'm... back there, I'll blow a hole in you. You can't shoot him in the middle of the ceremony. By authority vested in me by the state, I pronounce a man and wife. Oh. It ain't legal. Get in that car. Get in the car. I've had just about enough of this. Stand back, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, fireworks. Next time I'm shooting lower. I'll have this annulled as soon as the courthouse opens. Dad, look, Davy Dumplin', come back here. What'll he do to them? What'll they do? What'll I do? Oh, he's all right. He's not mad at them. He's just sore at me. But where is he taking them? Well, your aunt's place is right near his. He'll probably drop them off right there. But you're sure they'll be safe? Oh, sure, I'm sure. Sure, Tucker, he's not such a bad guy. Just a little bit cantankerous sometimes. Oh. Well, I'll get your car somewhere. I'll take you right over. Hey, Newt! <clears throat> hey, Newt, where can I get a car? I'll rent you mine for five dollars. Just can you imagine that old guy trying to hold us up for five dollars? Oh, now, Charlie. Five dollars ain't much, and that includes my marrying fee. You've done nothing but cost me money since the day he came. He and his crazy oil well. Father, that's unfair. You brought him here to drill for oil yourself. I I'm sorry to interrupt. You keep out of this. The government man said there was oil in the back 60s. So where does he drill the well? Right under your bedroom window, a half-baked pipsqueak. He's not a pipsqueak. He's the youngest engineer in this state to ever win a scholarship. Scholarship? He doesn't know an oil well from a hole in the ground. Father, the oil's there. And he'd have found it if you hadn't fired him. Look, you see, mister, yesterday we were on the wrong train, and today I'm in the wrong... Shut up! Why don't you call him? Maybe he could do something about it. Hey, Newt! Hey, no! You! What's all the hooting and tooting about? We can't get it started. Yep, it is too bad you got parted. No, I, I. We can't get it started. I agree. Too bad you got parted. Too bad we got parted. Oh, so you can't get it started. Yes. You got the switch on? Yes. Well, turn it off. Now open the door. I don't think he heard what I said. Now 
I'll make like you're going to get out. I wonder should I told him how to stop it. That's not true. Charlie offered to put his own money into the well if you let him go ahead. You're just stubborn. Stubborn? Let me tell you Listen, something, young lady. Shucks, I didn't get to see it. You were standing in the way. Huh? What's this? been doing all day. Well, Mr. Tucker. No, Mr. Tucker, me. I told you I wanted this thing torn down, loaded in the truck, and off my place by sundown. Oil well. Every time I look at it, it makes me mad enough to kill. Get out of that car and get in the house. $40,000 sunk in a hole. Hey, you. Who, me? Uh, us? Where do you think you're going? Well, uh, you, you said to go... You wouldn't talk like that if you didn't have that shotgun in your hand. Now then, what do you want to say, young man? I want to say, uh, my wife's in Weehawk and I miss her. What are you doing in my car? Well, your daughter was giving us a ride to the Henderson place. <laughs> She's my wife's Aunt Hannah. Hannah? You mean Abner Henderson's wife? Yeah. They live on the next farm. Gee, how do I get there? Walk. Oh. Which way? Fast. Come on, baby Duffer. Come on, Daisy. Come on. That oil well. <laughs> Wouldn't you like some more potatoes? No, I've had the fill. Can I have some more candy, Aunt Hannah? Well, of course you can, darling. All you want. Let Aunt Hannah fix your bread for you, hmm? She takes after our side of the family, Blondie. <laughs> the Millers have always been good eaters. Well, why is it that people always want to eat more in the country than they do in the city? I reckon it's because they have more time and uh, more to eat. <laughs> I don't feel like I could hold another bite. Mm. Uh, pass this chicken, will you, Uncle Abner? There you are. I wish there was more of me. Thank goodness there isn't. You've got jam all over you now. Just look at yourself. How can I, Mommy? I'm all in the same face. Charlie, why don't you come and have something to eat? It'll do you good. No, thanks, Mrs. Bumstead. I'd... I just don't feel like it. Oh, now, Charlie, you take things too serious. Old man Tucker will forget all about his grudge as soon as he cools off. I don't know. Remember an old man Hart chewed his horses wrong? Well, what of it? Well, Tucker ain't spoke to him since. And I think that was 15 years ago. Shh. Well, he ain't. Dagwood, we got two things to boast about around these parts. Old man Collins can hold his liquor longer. And old Tucker can hold a grudge longer than any two men in the county. Now, Abner, that ain't so. You know, if he'd just given me two days more, I could have brought that well in. Then Millie and I would have had a real nice wedding, like, like regular people. I know it, Charlie. But why don't you sit down and have something to eat? I know what I'd do if I was Charlie. What? I'd wait until it got good and dark, and I'd get myself a ladder, and I'd go over there and get my wife. Hello? Yes. Why, Dagwood, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, you really think that might work? Of course. Might work. Well, I know, but how will Millie know she's not expecting me? Oh. Tucker's got a phone, ain't he? Yes. 
Well, we got one, too. Well, don't you see, Mr. Henderson? He'd never let me speak to her. Let me get her on the telephone. Then you can talk to her after I get her. Certainly. Yeah. Might work. Oh, it'll work. Where's the telephone, Aunt Hannah? Oh, what's the number? Uh, 5643. Uh, now, quiet, everybody, or you'll hear us. Come on, Daisy. I need some fresh air. Tell her, tell her what time or she'll be late. Tell her to hang something white in the window so you'll know what room she's in. Better ask which room old Tucker's in, too. Shh, everybody. Hello, Mr. Tucker? Well, this is the vice president and treasurer of the quilting club. And I was wondering if you couldn't tell your daughter, Millie, would it be too much trouble? Please. Wait. I bet you'll be able to hear that. Hello, Millie. Hold the line a minute, will you? Hello, Millie. How are you, dear? Oh, I've been worrying about you so much, Millie. I, I, look, I've been trying to get a hold of you for the last, I don't know how long. I feel just like Cupid. Listen to Baby Dumplin. Aren't you glad we have him out here away from all the dangers of a Fourth of July? Baby Dumpling, what are you doing in that car? I'm making like I'm going for a drive. Well, make like you're going to get out. Oh, shut up. Oh, Baby Dumpling! Baby Dumpling! Oh! What, 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 what's the matter? Where'd he go? Dad, where'd he go? Oh, baby, you scared the daylights out of us. Oh, baby, are you all right? Something's sticking me. Oh, huh? turn around, let me see. Oh, why, huh? it's a needle. Huh? Oh, a needle. Huh? Well, I certainly do want to thank you folks for the car and everything. That's awfully swell of you. Is there plenty of gas in the car, Abner? Pull up. Well. Hope it works out all right. Yeah? Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> oh, Dagwood, I almost wish it was us. It's so romantic. Oh! 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 Oh!
I stepped on something here and it... Well, help him up, Dagwood. Yeah, let me help you, Sally. Oh. What on oh. earth made you... Daisy, shame. Oh. Easy now. No, I'm all right. It just... Ooh. Hey, I must have turned my ankle. I'll help you in the house. No, now, wait a minute. Look, now, listen, I can't do that. Millie's waiting. Everything's planned. But how can you drive the car and, and climb the ladder and everything? Yeah, how but... can you? I've got an idea. Dag, would you can do it for him. Yeah. Oh, now, see here, Bonnie. Well, it was your idea in the first place. Oh, oh but Bonnie... Don't be selfish, Dagwood. Uncle Abner, take off his shoe. Yes, yeah, sit no, right wait a minute. Wait a minute. Charlie can sit in the car and you can drive. How does it feel now, Charlie? I don't know. It seems much easier now. Oh, it feels better now. Yeah. Oh, 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 what? No, no, I, I, I can't even stand on it. Help oh. him in the car, Dagwood. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Come on, baby Gumpin. You get in the back with Charlie. Come on, Daisy. All right, Dagwood, you take the wheel. Oh, Bonda, you know I get dizzy on a ladder. Dagwood, get in the car. Oh. Might work. Now, darling, have you got everything all straight? Yeah, I guess so. We'll be waiting right here. All right. Oh, don't forget, there'll be something white in the window. Okay. Dagwood, <laughs> do you know where the ladder is? Sure. It, it, uh, where, where is it? It's leaning against the house. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Now, listen, now, now whistle real soft so she'll know who you are. All right, all right. Dagwood. Blondie, it'll be daylight before I get started. Oh, all right. Go on, go on. Daddy! Huh? Peace and quiet. Oh, where's the ladder? Millie will never recognize his whistle. <laughs> Daisy! Daisy! Oh, dear, she'll ruin everything. I won't get her, Mommy. All right, dear. But be quiet and hurry right back.
Millie. Gee, Millie, what'd you go to bed for? I thought you'd be all ready. Now, don't be frightened. Charlie sprained his ankle, and I came to get you in his place. Hurry up and get dressed, and, and I'll turn my back. Come on. I'll be ready in a minute. Better be quiet, or you'll wake up that old goat with the shotgun. You'd better speed it up or they'll think something's wrong. Aren't you ready yet? Sure, I'm ready. Oh, oh. the other way. Yeah. Put up your hands. Who, me? Yes, you. What do you mean by sneaking up on me like that? Sneaking up on you? You're the sneak. A kidnapper and trespasser, too. I've got the right to shoot you down like I would any other thief. You wouldn't talk that way if you didn't have a shotgun in your hand. Is that so? Again. He tried to shoot me, and I popped him. Is he hurt? I don't know, but let's get out of here before he comes to. Where's Baby Dumpling? Huh? Baby Dumpling? I don't know. Baby Dumpling! 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 Why did I ever let him out of my sight? Here I am, Mommy. Oh! Get back! Get back! You'll fall! No, I won't. Oh! <laughs> Let's go, baby. Dagwood, go up and bring him down. Oh. 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 What happened? Oh. Baby, let's go. Look out. Look out, baby. Get back. Oh. Thanks, Daddy. Oh. <laughs> baby, are you hurt? Get oh. off, Daisy. Oh, darling, I thought this was the end. Oh, oh honey. I wouldn't have run away and left him on the roof if I'd seen him. I'm sorry, Blondie. It was all my fault. No, it wasn't. It was mine. No, it wasn't. You had nothing to do. Don't argue, Dagwood. Every single solitary thing that's happened to us on this trip has been my fault. Oh, now, Blondie, that isn't... It is, too. I've been a silly, cowardly woman. What's a few firecrackers compared to all the danger I've dragged us into? But, dear, you didn't know. I it... didn't know anything. I took us away from home because I was afraid. I guess every mother's afraid, but it's her duty to face it, and it's her duty to hide it, too. I give you my word, Dagwood, I'll never run away from things again. If Baby Dumpling wants to do something, I'll just let him do it. Because there must be someone who looks out for little boys, besides their mother. Barney, you mustn't. <laughs> Dagwood, you're so understanding. Does all this mean I can have some firecrackers, Mommy? Maybe, dear. Daddy, 
I've been such a fool. Can I have a match? No, no, baby dumpling. You know your mommy doesn't want you to have matches. Give him a match. Huh? Oh. Here. Where's my powder puff? I... Oh! oh. oh here, throw it! What? 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 Here. What? It's dynamite. Hey, I'm afraid you're gonna have to help me. Oh! oh. Lie down! Oh. Bumstead, baby dumpling, thank goodness you're safe. What happened? The baby lit a firecracker. Millie! Millie! Millie, it's happened! We've struck oil! You were right, Charlie. I was wrong. <laughs> oh, it wasn't me, Mr. Tucker. They were the ones that did it. Oh, thanks, folks. Oh. Thanks a million. Well, we don't deserve the credit, Mr. Tucker. Really, we don't. Oh, of course not. Well. It all belongs to your son-in-law. Son-in-law? Oh, son-in-law! <laughs> Charlie, you and Millie are gonna have a real wedding. Church, bridesmaid, flowers, preacher, and everything. Oh, Dad. That, that's swell, Mr. Tucker. We better get that thing capped. Oh, Come on, let's go. Come on, honey. You wouldn't think a little old firecracker could make so many people happy, would you? Oh, that good? If I've got oil all over my nice new dress, I'm going to sit right down and cry. I feel something sticky on me. Me too. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'll light a match to see what it is. <laughs> Just listen to this. Sanest fourth in the history of the state. The calmest fourth of July ever witnessed took place all over this state yesterday. Only three casualties were reported. Mr. Dagwood Bumstead, who resides at 4227 Agnes Street, his wife, Mrs. Dagwood Bumstead, with whose relatives they were spending the weekend holiday, and their six-year-old son, Dagwood Bumstead, Jr. Doesn't that say anything about Daisy, Mr. Dithers? Oh, uh, well, I hadn't gotten to that yet. Uh, uh, with them was their dog, Daisy, who uh, suffered slight burns on her appendage. Those papers never get anything right. It's her tail. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>